Now that is a maintenance log. Hey, what's up Speedy's Garage gang? Welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. This week we're gonna continue the restoration project on Project Sport Runner here, our 2002 third gen supercharged 4Runner. And today <clears throat> I'm gonna tackle the differentials and the transfer case fluids. About, uh, I'm about to look, I think it was 15 years ago maybe, at 60,000 miles. This is what I used in the diffs and transfer case. It's been almost 100,000 miles in 15 years and it's done great. So I'm gonna go back with this again. Can't take credit for this. Um, saw it online, I made one myself. This is just my implementation. But I'm gonna use this for my transfer pump. And if you missed it, I showed you how to make one and the parts you need and I'll link that to the top. But in a nutshell, I'm gonna fill this up with the, uh, with the gear oil and then pressurize it. And then I made a little spout. We'll just hook that in there loosen our valve and fill up the diffs. It should go pretty smoothly. The only caveat, this should be a super straightforward um, project. The only caveat to that is it is a 21 year old vehicle at this point, And it's been 15 years and 100,000 miles since those bolts have been taken loose. So I got my fingers crossed. None of them give me a real hard time. I believe it's a 24 millimeter for the rear diff um, fill and drain plugs and the same for the transfer case. So I've got that. Got my ratchet, gonna need it. The front diff's a little bit different. For some reason, Toyota went with like a inverted hex. So you're gonna need something like this. I'm not sure if mine's a 10 or a 12, but I've got both, so I'll figure that out once I get down there. But these are known to strip, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to take it easy and be careful with that. I did, however, get bolts. They're not um, hex. Hopefully you can see that. And I'll show you the part numbers for these in a second but I replaced them. These are Lexus parts, but I wanted to get rid of those hex so I never have to worry about them again and replace them with like a normal, normal drain plug with a bolt on it so it's less likely to strip. So I got that, uh, the fluid, the pump I talked about, hex I talked about, and then some gaskets to go back and replace the gaskets or the washers on the drain plug. So I'll show you the part numbers now. So there is the front diff drain bolt. There's the front diff fill bolt. Again, those are Lexus parts, so if you're looking for them, you need to look under Lexus. Uh, this is the diff, I can't remember if this is drain. Yeah, these must be drain gaskets for the diff and I think the transfer case too, maybe. I'll figure that when I get down there. These are crush washers, so this says, I wrote diffs on it, so it must just be the diffs. Uh, front diff drain plug gasket, so that's the drain plug for the front. And then this is the transfer case. And obviously I'll compare to what I'm taking off the truck. But there's your part numbers if you wanna replace those parts as well. Obviously you'll need a catch pan. I am gonna be using my creeper. I am gonna be using my battery powered cordless ratchet for the skid plates and they are a 12 millimeter. And because mine has the sport bumper skid, whatever you wanna call it on it, I need an extension to get the front skid plate off. So I've got that too. I'm gonna start by getting the skid plates out of the way. All right, now I'm gonna check and see what size these plugs are all right. One feels like it is not a 12. This says a 10 on it. Let's see if it's a 10. All right, that one's the fill plug. It's a 10. The drain plug. Pretty sure that's also a 10, but I'm gonna double check. Okay, your mileage may vary, but on mine, both of these are a 10 hex. And while I'm here, since the front one tends to be the one that gives the most trouble, I'm going to hit it with some brake clean. Try to clean the threads out. Give it a little, a little scrub or clean the, I guess the hex hole out, I should say, really. Just got some goop in there. Give me the most chance of success of getting that loose. 
clean that up a little bit more. There's quite a bit of goop in there actually. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the drain bolt too. And then I'm gonna give them a little baby tap with a hammer. Just in case there's anything that might break up. And finally, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of penetrant, penetrating oil. While I'm up here, <clears throat> I'm gonna find out how much trouble this is gonna give me. Always try to remove the fill bolt first. Because if you drain the diff and then you can't get the fill bolt off, you might be in a pickle. Uh, let's see. I just popped up. Make sure. Remember, it's lefty looty. <laughs> lefty looty. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. My socket wrench is marked on and off, so I can't mess that up. You want to make sure your um, hex hole on your plug is very clean, like you saw me do. And if you have to, you could use a couple of light taps of a hammer to make sure it's fully seated. Mine's, mine's pretty clean. I'm pretty lucky this truck isn't too rusty or anything. Then, oh, I got lucky. So that one is now, that one's loose. Let's try the, make sure this is still set to off. It is. Let's try the drain bolt. Maybe I'll get lucky with that too. Whew, that one's tight another angle uh, ha, got lucky with it ha, I don't know if the taps with the hammer or the or the uh, penetrating oil let it soak for about 10 minutes but those two are now loose all right I'm gonna go ahead and take the fill bolt all the way out to be honest with you these two were the ones I was most worried about hopefully drain pan ready there's what the drain bolt looks like Nothing out of the ordinary, I don't guess. Now I'm going to take the fill bolt. I mean, the uh, that was the fill bolt. I'm talking backwards. Got too much on my mind. Fill bolt. Now we're going to take the drain bolt out. And this one probably has a magnet on it. Oh, crap. Of course I'll make a mess. <laughs> it's pretty clean, actually. There's the magnet. Hopefully you can see. Very little gook. Just a little bit of grease, really. I don't really feel any. I'll take a closer look at it over on the workbench while this drains. Okay, here is the fill plug. I'm going to give you a better look at it. Mine was a 10 hex. And there's the washer that was on it. I'll have to match that up with, with what I've got over here. And I'll compare part numbers, too. And on the drain bolt... The washer, copper washer, actually stayed with the differential. So if you saw that in the video, you got a good eye. I had to go back and just just pick it up. But that's the copper copper washer. And then here is a close-up of the magnet. Like I said, I don't feel anything. It's very soft. It's just uh, almost like grease. Not very gritty. Yeah, I think everything's smells like gear oil. I think everything's good there and this has got uh, I mean obviously it doesn't run in four-wheel drive all the time but this gear oil had 100,000 miles on it. Still look good in the front 15 years or so give or take. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the new fill plug and uh, like I said I went this direction so that I wouldn't ever have to worry about these hex. These I don't know Done it once before and they survived both times, but maybe I just got lucky like you saw. So I'm going to switch to these. So this is the fill and I need to figure out uh, which gasket it is. I think it's this one. It goes on that. I believe the flat side would go against your 
yeah, the flat side would go against your, your bolt. So that one's ready to go. And then this is the drain bolt. And as you can see, it has a magnet on it, just like the original. But again, it's a bolt instead of a hex. We got a new copper washer for that. I know that for sure. That's it. Yep. All right. Those are ready to go. And these new plugs are 14 millimeter. So that'll make it nice. And just to be double, triple sure, because I don't really know. I mean, it could be another 15 years before I do this. I don't know what kind of uh, environment this truck is going to see over the next 15 years. So just to be double, triple, quadruple sure, I'm going to put just a touch of anti-seize on the threads of both the fill and the drain, especially around the area where the washer will be. And that's just going to give me a little bit of insurance that, um, you know, even if it's in, you know, salty, snowy weather a lot for the next 15 years, hopefully this will prevent some problems. Okay, it looks like it's pretty well done drain. I'm getting a little small drip, but that's no big deal. I'll go ahead and I did clean all that up, wiped it up really good, made sure there's nothing weird in the threads. I'm going to go ahead and install the drain plug. Don't forget your washer. And the torque on this guy is 48 foot-pounds. There we go. Now I can fill the uh, little, I'm going to call it a fluid transfer pump with diff fluid. Get ready for that. And I made some notes whenever I'm doing a, a lot of work like this with uh, torque specs and um, fluid amounts. So the front diff takes 1.22 quarts according to the field service manual. So I'm probably going to just put two quarts in it for now. Plus the first time I'm using it and make sure it works. And then make sure your ball valve is, is closed. I almost forgot and started to pump this up. And then all you do is just pump it up to build a little bit of pressure. And then all I should have to do is put this in the fill hole and open the valve and it should easily fill the, the uh, differential. Usually this is kind of a pain in the butt job where you have to use a pump or something. It's super messy. If you're going from one bottle to the next, gear oil gets everywhere. So I'm hoping this will make it quick and easy. Um, first time I've used it, so we're going to see. I got my fingers crossed. Hoping this valve works well. This is uh, 3 8 I uh, OD, um, clear vinyl tubing, so that means the ID is a quarter inch. Same for the, same for the little valve, it's a quarter inch. So I don't know, it seems like it was flowing okay. It's not super cold, and uh, I stored these in the house last night so that they would be reasonably warm to hopefully let it flow a little bit faster. So let's get into the truck, see how it does. All right, we're gonna open the valve, and I can see fluid flowing. So we're gonna let that go for a minute. I'm gonna keep an eye on the container. It's flowing pretty quick, actually. Not bad. When I see it start to pour out of the fill hole, that's how I'll know it's full. Okay, as you can see, it is pouring out. That means we are full. Don't forget your washer. Remember, flat side towards the bolt. And I'm happy to report <laughs> that little fluid transfer pump worked great. Not the fastest thing in the world, but honestly, if you're just laying under the car watching it, who cares? It seemed to me, let's see, I'm looking at my watch. It seemed to me like it flowed about a quart every four minutes. So that's how fast it goes. And that's with, you know, I wasn't going crazy with the pumps on the pumper either. Just, just enough to keep it going. And this one is, uh, let's see, it's torqued to 29 foot-pounds. I'm double checking my torque wrench. I think I heard a click. So that worked really, really good. And you can see it's got a little storage spot if you use the tube that came with it, like I showed you in the when I built it. And I'm going to take the pressure off of it because i got to put more fluid in it anyway.
And now I can go start working on the transfer case. Transfer case, pretty much same procedure. We're gonna loosen the fill bolt first and then the drain bolt. And I think this time I'm gonna leave the fill bolt in there. Maybe that'll prevent the fluid from just shooting out like the front diff did. We're gonna try that and see. And I did spray these down with a little bit of um, penetrant oil. See if it'll make these easier to come off. And these are both uh, 24. Hopefully you can see that, 24 millimeter. Lefty, loo lefty loosey, righty tighty. Yeah, that one was easy actually. Good news there. So I'm just gonna leave that one snug. Now I'm gonna get ready for the drain. I'm going to grab a rag just in case. Oh, yeah. All right, pro tip. <laughs> Leave the fill bolt in until you get the fluid started draining. And the transfer case drain bolt does not have a magnet. It's just a regular bolt. There is a washer on it, so pay attention to that. Make sure you get it. And actually, the fill plug and the drain plug look identical. So I'm just going to go get the two washers and uh, fill up the little pump, transfer pump, while this finishes draining. And I did put a little bit of anti-seize on both the drain and fill plugs. And there's nothing special about the transfer case plug washer. It's just a regular washer. It doesn't crush or anything, but you definitely want to make sure you put it on. And I'm down to just a drip, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the drain plug. And get our handy dandy fluid transfer pump in place. I'm really happy with how this thing has worked out. It's the same as before. We'll let it fill until it starts to just trickle out of the fill hole. And then we know we're good. And the book says the capacity on the transfer case, and this is a 2002 automatic, I don't know if it matters, is 1.3 quarts. And I'm starting to see it come out. So we're gonna turn off the pump. Install the plug. Don't forget the washer. And the torque spec on these is 27 foot-pounds. That's pretty much rinse and repeat for the rear differential. I did turn off the parking brake, but make sure you have the wheels chocked. You know, be careful so that this cable could be moved out of the way. Give me access to the, the field bolt. It's also 24 millimeter. That is now loose. And you want to probably make sure you're using a six point socket on all these. Just be double sure you don't strip anything. <clears throat> that was tight. I'm about to get a longer, longer ratchet for that one. And that's all it took. Sometimes you just need the right tool. All right, and just like last, last time, the drain or the fill plug in so it doesn't go everywhere and I'm gonna get a rag just in case no matter what the rag is always at the other end of the shop <laughs> every time I need it all right I'm probably gonna get a little bit messy on this deal oh I didn't <laughs> this one does have a magnet and actually, the oil doesn't look too bad. Let's try to look. get you guys where you can see this. You see it? About 100,000 miles on it, 15 years. Not terrible. And these drain plug gaskets are the crush type. So you want to put the smooth side towards the plug. You've got two left. 
And I always like to inspect the magnet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the these old gaskets off. You see that? Doesn't look bad. Don't feel any chunks. And this one would be the one that gets the most use, obviously. I feel just some small shavings, but I bet I bet that's all normal. Just some little ones. But that's what the magnet's there for, is to catch all that stuff. So there are the uh, drain and fill bolts all cleaned up. Clean the magnet up really good. And the washers are installed. Ready to fill the rear diff. Call this project done. Okay, we're down to just a drip. Just like before, I'm gonna just wipe it off, reinstall the drain plug, make sure you got your washer. And it's rinse and repeat again on the fluid. This rear differential is the non E locker and it takes 2.59 quarts. If you have the E locker, I think it's a little bit more than that, maybe 2.6 2. or 2.5. 2.9 maybe 2.91 and I have found about 20 pumps from the pump sprayer or fluid transfer pump we're going to call it is about right and then when it starts to flow kind of slowly I'll pump it up you know 15 more times this one's going to take a minute since it's 2.59 quarts give or take and I think I said it's about a <clears throat> three minutes a quart flow rate all right I can see the the fluid is just about to start coming out. I'm going to say that is full. Don't forget your washer. Both the fill and the drain get torqued to 36 foot pounds. That one's good. Tightened him up a little bit earlier. There we go. So I ordered, I found an online deal and I ordered a pack of six of these thinking I would have about three quarters of one left over and it was pretty close. So there's how much is left in the container and I don't know how much that is, but it's, if a half gallon's here, that's what, maybe a quarter of a quart and then one full quart. I wanted to have one left over just in case I ever need to do any top ups or have to do some more work or do something and I need it, I've got it here on hand. So that's sort of where it ended up in terms of fluid. And I'm going to wait a couple of days before I put the front skid plates back on just so I can keep an eye on those front diff uh, drain and fill bolts to make sure, particularly the drain one, just to make sure I don't have any leaks. So I'm going to wait to do that. And other than that, that's a complete project. Pretty easy to do and I might have gotten lucky. Either the uh, liquid wrench worked really well or maybe a little tap with the hammer or I'm just lucky. But none of the bolts gave me any trouble. They all came off nice and easy and it made it for a pretty nice relaxing project which was nice for a change. After doing the suspension before, that was a pain in the butt. And that's another project complete on Project Sport Runner as part of our restoration. So that's timing belt service, water pump, all the associated pulleys and belts, all the drive belts, supercharger belt, radiator, upper and loader radiator hoses, a coolant flush using Toyota coolant, uh, new rear axle seals, new rear bearings, wheel bearings, new rear brakes, I'm trying to think of everything, new lower ball joints, we adjusted the suspension to raise the truck up in the front just about a half an inch, and got new tires. And now we have done all of the transfer case and differential fluid changes. I'll link to a playlist for these restoration projects if it's something you want to kind of come back and follow along. And our parts um, pile has gotten a little bit smaller this week. Next up is either automatic transmission fluid swap or power steering fluid swap. If you have a preference, leave me a comment on which one you'd like to see first. I gotta do both of them. It doesn't make any difference to me which one I do first. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as the website, www.speediesgarage.net. And hopefully, I'll see you out there.